Did you know that humans have remnants of a tail within their bodies? Welcome to our exploration of evolution's echoes, top 10 lost body parts. Today, we're stepping back in time, unearthing the intriguing footprints of human evolution. Picture this, humans, over the course of millions of years, have evolved to lose certain body parts. These lost parts, or evolutionary vestiges, are fascinating relics of our ancestors' lives. In our journey today, we'll uncover 10 such vestiges. We'll delve into the enigma of the human appendix, the mystery of wisdom teeth, and the tale of the tailbone. We'll explore the little-known plica semilunaris, the ear muscles that some can wiggle, and the curious case of the palmar grasp reflex. We'll also shed light on our sparse body hair, the vomeronasal organ, the sinus cavities, and last but not least, male nipples. Join us as we delve into the fascinating world of human evolution. First up, the infamous appendix, a small pouch connected to our large intestine. Once thought to be a redundant relic of our evolutionary past, the appendix was believed to have once assisted in the digestion of a primarily plant-based diet that our ancestors consumed. Over millennia, as human diets shifted towards a balance of meat and plant-based foods, the appendix began to shrink, its role in digestion diminished, eventually becoming what we know as a vestigial organ. However, don't be too quick to write off the appendix. Current theories propose that while it may not be crucial for digestion anymore, it could play a minor but interesting role in our immune system. Some researchers suggest that the appendix might act as a safe house for beneficial gut bacteria, offering a refuge during times of illness. Once a critical part of our digestive system, the appendix now serves a reduced but intriguing role. Next, we dive into the world of wisdom teeth, the third set of molars that often cause trouble in adulthood. These late bloomers of the dental world once played a crucial role in our ancestors' survival. Back in the day, a rough diet of roots, leaves, meat and nuts meant our predecessors needed all the molar power they could get. But as we evolved and our diets changed, our jaws followed suit, gradually becoming smaller. With less space in the mouth and the advent of cooking softening our food, these third molars became less necessary. Today they often don't even have enough room to emerge properly, leading to misalignment and impaction. This lack of space is why wisdom teeth often need surgical removal today to prevent potential complications such as pain, infection and damage to surrounding teeth. From essential tools for survival to modern dental dilemmas, wisdom teeth certainly leave their mark. Ever had a tailbone injury? Then you've felt the vestige of our ancestral tail. This small bone at the base of our spine, known as the cossix, is a throwback to a time when our ancestors had tails. These tails served a variety of purposes. They were used for balance, communication, and even as an extra limb to hold onto branches. Over time, as our ancestors evolved into bipedal creatures, the need for a tail diminished. They began to rely more on their arms and legs for balance and communication, making the tail redundant. As a result, it slowly receded over generations, leaving behind what we now know as the coccyx. Today, the coccyx may not wag or swing from trees, but it still has a purpose. It serves as a support structure for various muscles and a place of attachment for the pelvic floor. However, its prominence can lead to discomfort or pain if injured, a condition known as coccidemia. Though we don't wag our tails anymore, this small bone serves as a reminder of our evolutionary past. Ever notice the tiny fold in the corner of your eye? That's the plica semilunaris, a remnant of a third eyelid. It's a tiny, crescent-shaped piece of tissue nestled in the corner of our eyes, a gentle nod to our evolutionary past. This third eyelid, fully functional in many animals, plays a crucial role in maintaining eye health, offering an additional layer of protection and distributing tears across the eye surface. In humans, however, the functionality of this third eyelid has diminished. The plica semilunaris doesn't sweep across our eyes like a windshield wiper, as it does for birds, reptiles and some mammals. Instead, it has a reduced role, helping with eye movement and drainage of tears. Is it a useless artifact of our evolution? Not quite. Even though it doesn't blink like a lizard's, the plica semilunaris plays a small but significant role in our eyes. While we may not blink it like a lizard, the plica semilunaris is a fascinating vestige of our evolutionary journey. Can you wiggle your ears? Some people can, thanks to vestigial ear muscles. Yes, you heard that right. We humans possess tiny muscles around our ears, a fascinating remnant from our evolutionary past. 
In many animals, these ear muscles play an essential role. They allow creatures like cats and rabbits to rotate their ears towards sounds, enhancing their ability to detect predators or prey. It's a survival thing. But in humans, these muscles have largely lost their function. We don't need to swivel our ears to survive anymore, thanks to our complex brain that processes sound information in a much more sophisticated way. Yet, intriguingly, a small percentage of people can voluntarily control these muscles to wiggle their ears. It's a harmless, albeit amusing, trait that doesn't provide any particular advantage or disadvantage. So why can some people do it? It's likely just a quirk of genetic variation, a random throwback to our animal ancestors. From ear wiggling to sound localization, ear muscles certainly lend an ear to our evolutionary history. Ever seen a baby grasp a finger tightly? That's the palmar grasp reflex, a vestige from our tree-dwelling ancestors. Fascinating, isn't it? This reflex is an automatic response from newborns, where they clench their tiny fists around anything that strokes their palms. Our primate ancestors heavily relied on this reflex. Imagine baby monkeys clinging onto their mother's fur as she swung from tree to tree. This instinctive grasp was essential for their survival. It helped them stay secure and close to their mother, safeguarding them from the dangers of the wild. However, as we evolved and moved away from tree dwelling, this reflex lost its prime importance. Today, it's a temporary reflex that fades away within the first six months of a baby's life. It's been replaced by voluntary grasping, allowing us to manipulate objects with precision, a skill vital in our tool-using society. While we don't swing from trees anymore, the palmer grasp reflex is a charming reminder of our past. Ever wondered why we have so little hair compared to other mammals? Let's explore the evolution of body hair. Our prehistoric ancestors were once covered in a thick layer of fur, much like our primate cousins today. This dense fur served a dual purpose. It helped regulate body temperature in varying climates and played a crucial role in communication, with changes in fur standing out as visual signals. As humans evolved, however, our lifestyles changed. We discovered fire, invented clothes, and started living in varied climates. These changes reduced our reliance on body hair for temperature regulation and communication. Today, our body hair is much thinner and serves minimal practical purpose. Some suggest it aids in the distribution of pheromones, while others believe it's simply a relic of our past. Though we've lost most of our fur, body hair remains a fuzzy vestige of our evolutionary past. Let's delve into the world of smell and the intriguing vestige of the vomeronasal organ, also known as Jacobson's organ. You may be surprised to know that many animals, from mammals to reptiles, possess a vomeronasal organ, a critical tool for detecting pheromones. This unique organ is equipped with special sensory cells to pick up chemical signals from the environment, aiding in various behavioral responses. In humans, we see a remnant of this organ in our nasal cavity, but its functionality is a topic of intense debate among scientists. While it doesn't sniff out pheromones like the vomeronasal organ of a snake or a dog, it's believed to play a role in communication. So, why did we lose this useful feature? The evolutionary reasons are not clearly understood. Some scientists suggest that as our ancestors evolved to rely less on smell for survival, the need for a potent pheromone-detecting organ decreased. Though we may not sniff out pheromones like a snake, the vomeronasal organ offers a fascinating whiff of our evolutionary past. Ever suffered from sinusitis? Then you felt the impact of our vestigial sinus cavities. Once upon an evolutionary timeline, these air-filled pockets within our facial bones served a protective role. They helped humidify the air we breathed in, caught potential pathogens, and even made our ancestors' heads lighter, aiding their survival in an ever-changing environment. Fast forward to today, and our sinus cavities are somewhat of an evolutionary hangover. They cause us issues like sinusitis, an inflammation often leading to headaches, congestion, and a world of discomfort. This is primarily due to changes in our facial structure over time. As our ancestors began walking upright, our faces shortened, causing the sinus drainage system to become more horizontal, making them more prone to blockages. So if you've ever wondered why we have these seemingly problematic pockets in our faces, it's another fascinating tale of our evolutionary journey. From protecting our ancestors to causing modern headaches, sinus cavities certainly resonate with our evolutionary history. Last but not least, let's discuss a puzzling vestige. Male nipples. When you think about it, isn't it curious that men have nipples? They don't nurse babies, do they? 
yet there they are. This all comes down to our development in the womb. You see, all embryos initially follow a female blueprint, which includes the formation of nipples. It's not until about the sixth week of gestation that the male sex hormone kicks in for those with a Y chromosome steering development down the male pathway. But by then, nipples have already formed. Despite not serving a direct function, male nipples persist through evolution. Why? Well, they're not harmful, and evolution tends to ignore traits that don't affect survival or reproduction. Some theories also suggest that they might still be around due to sexual dimorphism, the differences in appearance between males and females of the same species. Though they may not serve a direct function, male nipples paint a fascinating picture of our evolutionary journey. We've journeyed through the body and our evolutionary past, and we hope you've enjoyed the ride. If you found this exploration as fascinating as we did, be sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on future voyages into the mysteries of our world. And we're always eager to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below. Maybe you've got a topic you're burning to know more about. We're all ears. Remember, every part of you tells a story of evolution. Until next time, keep exploring.